Hi, welcome to another quick and easy costume tutorial. I'm Penny from Immersio LARP Studio. Uh, we at Immersio run a variety of different kinds of LARPs, but we know that for a lot of people finding the right costume for a LARP can be intimidating. Uh, often it's, it's seen as too difficult or too expensive. So we're putting together a series of videos on assembling easy and inexpensive costumes. Today I'm going to show you how to make a Regency tailed frock coat, a gentleman's frock coat, suitable for our Jane Austen LARP Good Society. Uh, we're making this from a modern coat, which I just found at the op shop. If your local op shops or thrift stores are closed right now due to the pandemic, you might still be able to pull this together if you have an old business jacket or coat that you're happy to sacrifice for the cause. Uh, because we're going to be cutting into it, this is a great project to do with an old jacket that's maybe a little bit tight on you now, especially if it still fits you in the arms and shoulders, uh, but might be a little bit tight across the tummy, that'd be a good candidate. Um, this should be a fairly quick and easy project for you. Uh, you should be able to do it with no sewing if that's something you'd like to avoid. But before we get started, I will warn you, we've had a bit of a time making this video. Um, I lost a bunch of footage. Uh, there's some footage I'd hoped to refilm that we just haven't been able to refilm. So you might have to put up with some dogs barking in the background and a few other little imperfections along the way. So please bear with us, but I hope you find this tutorial useful. All right, this is Jason in the coat that we got from the op shop. Uh, it is actually a ladies overcoat. It's very swishy and very long. It has nicely little slightly puffed sleeves. Go like this. Yeah. Uh, it's double breasted, which is great. It's got these beautiful big lapels and it's wool and a beautiful red colour. Uh, it was a real score uh, and, and so I couldn't resist picking it up. But if you can't find something as beautiful as this, you can also use this technique with uh, any kind of uh, business jacket you've got, so long as it uh, gives you a little bit of length, so something that's going to come down below at least sort of your bum. Uh, Double-breasted, if you can get it, is very nice, but if it's not double-breasted, make sure that its opening is... Oh, my dogs. Opening is... Um, nice and high so uh, can you put your hands just yeah so uh, just below that a little bit below that's where we're gonna cut it uh, just below those sort of buttons there so it'll still button up uh, and then we're also gonna cut it at the sides Go like this um, down the sides no like that like yes there see um, uh, turn side on so you can see it's got a lot of lovely fullness in the skirt. If you're using a business jacket, it might not have that much fullness, but when we trim the front away, we're probably going to lose a lot of that fullness anyway, so that shouldn't matter. Turn around. No, no, as in back. Yep. Okay. The back of the jacket, of the coat, is straight. Uh, and it, it is not split in the back. So we might decide we would like to split that into two sort of tails, uh, but we'll see how it goes once we've cut the top, the bit out of the front. Okay, so I have taken our ladies overcoat and Thought I had filmed a nice bit of my progress, but turns out it wasn't filming, so I'm just gonna have to talk you through what I've done. I took my very trusty ruler and this time a piece of chalk, uh, because pencil doesn't show up very well on this, uh, and the chalk will wash out nicely. I measured about three centimeters down from the buttons and drew a line, uh, so I made a few marking points for myself and drew a nice straight line all the way across and then measured another three centimeters down from that line and made some marks and drew all the way across so that I will, this is where we're gonna want the jacket to actually end up at the front. It's gonna be there, a couple centimeters below the button, uh, but we need to have a bit of room so that we can have a nice double folded over hem that will be nice and secure and neat. <clears throat> I also measured a line about three centimeters away from the side seam of the coat. Uh, made a bunch of markings and a nice straight line with my ruler 
and then I have just cut along those lines. There are a few tricky spots like here where I actually had there was a little pocket in here uh, so a bit of fold over fabric there. I've just gone in and unpicked that with my little embroidery scissors if you've got a proper unpicking tool or even just some little pointy nail scissors you can go in and just take that out. I, it does leave a little bit of a gap there um, but since that's just going to be part of the hem it's going to be folded over and that's already folded over nice and neatly it's not going to leave a raw edge that's perfectly fine I don't have a problem with that um, trick with unpicking if you've not done it before your aim is to cut the stitches not the fabric uh, once you get the first couple stitches the rest usually come pretty easily so not too hard once you get the hang of it next step for this is to uh, iron it and probably also pin it because this fabric is a bit heavy and there's two layers of it uh, and I'm gonna try to fold that over uh, so that so that it's um, it's got that nice rolled over hem like we had on the other jacket uh, fold over twice so it's nice and neat and on that line that I had marked in chalk and do that all the way around and then we'll talk about whether we're gonna stitch it or use hemming tape Okay, so I've run into a slight problem uh, with my plan to uh, to have this folded over. This fabric is fairly thick and I don't know if you can see there. Um, hopefully I can get that to focus. There we go. Uh, it's folded over right at the edge of the coat on the on the edge here. It's folded over double on each side, which makes this sort of binding edge quite thick so when I go to fold it over twice this bit's thick but kind of acceptable but this bit here right at the end is really quite bulky and when I've got that on either side of a double breasted coat where they're overlapping each other it's sort of throwing off the line of the coat and looking a bit lumpy and not ideal. Uh, I think if the coat was made of a slightly thinner fabric or was only single breasted I might get away with it but uh, for this particular coat I think I'm not liking how that's going to look. So what I'm going to do instead is unpick a little bit of this up to my my line which you can still just faintly see there. I might remark that. Um, I'm going to unpick the stitching along here until that line so that I can fold both of these sides under independently so this will actually end up folding in a bit like that and and sitting inside and it will be it will end up being a lot neater um, won't be that messy so I'm gonna give that a go and uh, hopefully you can you can see what I'm gonna do So I'm actually just going to trim very carefully the edge of this off so that this will fold under neatly and nicely. So I'm just trying to say on this side of the old stitching. So you can see with that trimmed off, that's going to fold under there much more neatly. And this bit will fold under here much the same way. Great. So the way we're going to do that, and actually attach it, so I can show you what it's going to look like uh, if you want to go the no stitching option. I've got uh, bias, uh, sorry, hemming tape so this is uh, sometimes called fusible bonding web it's, uh, it's sort of stuff that gets kind of sticky once it gets hot and damp uh, it's kind of like double-sided tape for fabric we've used it before in other projects so hopefully you're familiar with it but I'll show you how you do it again just in case you haven't seen those videos 
Uh, so we're going to sort of do one little stretch at a time. That's going to sit just on the edge there and it's going to be folded over again. Now I'll only need to fold this over once because I'm going to fold the other side over once as well and it's going to end up meeting it and then I'll use another bit of, of tape to meet that. So that's going to go there and we're going to iron it. Put our damp cloth, clean damp cloth over the top. And our iron which is on, this is a wool garment so I've made sure the iron is on a heat that is appropriate for wool. Needs about 10 seconds. And we're pressing rather than moving the iron backwards and forwards because we don't we don't want the sticky bonding tape to move around. Okay, so now I'm doing the other side. So this is the, the lining, the inside of the coat. So you can see that's the first bit I did. Now I'm doing the second bit. So I've got another little bit of hemming tape. And I'm going to have to be a bit careful here because I've also got this actual lining fabric, which is polyester. It's a little bit more delicate. I'll probably have to use a lower heat setting on the iron to make sure it doesn't melt. Mmm. Mmm. That's a problem. Hemming tape does not seem to want to go on the acrylic fabric. Mm. So I am going to have to stitch that by hand. Damn. And now I'm using a third bit of hemming tape to close up the two sides. So that's going to go in there. It's got sticky, this bit hasn't, so I'll just give it another go. It's getting nice and sticky, so we're going to leave that to cool. So, on this side, I'm going to show you how to do the same thing only we're going to stitch it instead of using the hemming tape. Uh, so same thing we're going to unpick here up to up to our line uh, so that we can fold it under neatly. I've, I'm actually going to have lowered that line on the other side so I'm going to do the same here. The next step is just to continue that same process around the entire hem of the jacket. You can see me here unpicking the edge on the other side and tucking it under. Because my polyester lining didn't work with the hemming tape, I actually opted to sew the remaining hems, which is why I'm pinning it closed rather than using the hemming tape here. I hand sewed these edges with a felling stitch or hemming stitch. I'll post a link in the description below to a very good tutorial by Bernadette Banner on that stitch if you'd like to hand sew your own hem. I think that's probably better than uh, than any tutorial I could give you on that stitch. Otherwise if your lining works with hemming tape you can continue to use that or you could sew it with a machine. Just be aware that the top stitching will show as a border around the edge of your coat with machine sewing. The other thing you could do is to just cut out the lining entirely then you'll only be dealing with one layer to fold under and you should be able to use the hemming tape and not do any sewing at all regardless of what your lining is like. The other thing I did was cut a little bit into the corners of the jacket where the straight front part of the jacket meets the long tails at the back. And this makes it easier to fold 
the front and the sides in nice and neatly and make a little join. The other thing I did was uh, go in to split the tails. So I unpicked the centre seam of the back of the jacket and used this same hemming process to um, hem those edges so that there were two tails of the jacket. That's entirely optional and up to you and how you would like the jacket to look. Uh, you may even find if you're using a men's business jacket that it already has a nice little vent up the back of the jacket. And this is the finished product. You can see we split the back. I may go in and shape those tails a little bit more but this will absolutely do for now. Uh, Jason's paired the coat with a white shirt and some slim fitting pants that he already owned. He could also add a waistcoat and a cravat from Justin's earlier tutorial. And that's our Regency gentleman's outfit completely sorted. Um, not even the most basic outfit that you'd need for a Regency event like Good Society or the Jane Austen Festival uh, or any of those sorts of events. Uh, but actually looking pretty swish. Uh, the coat itself cost us about $20 at the op shop and the hemming tape was a few dollars just at the supermarket. Um, this one took us a little bit longer to put together than the ladies jacket since we had to deal with the lining and the hem was a bit longer but it was still only about two or three hours even with a few missteps along the way. So I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you did and you would like us to make more, please give us a like and subscribe to our channel. That really helps us out with YouTube's various algorithms. Uh, and yeah, we'd like to make more of these sorts of uh, quick and easy, inexpensive costume tutorials, but we need ideas for what other kinds of costumes you find intimidating. Um, what sorts of LARPs have you got? coming up maybe towards the end of this year or into next year that uh, that you need a costume for and you're not sure what to do give us a comment in in the comments below and we'll see if we can come up with something uh, sort of quick and easy out of things you might already have around the home or out of the op shop uh, yeah happy costuming